Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandbolts.com and I know I said we were done with the Teensy Synth project but I've been getting a ton of requests from people who have been wanting additional features and giving me some great ideas sending me videos of what they've been doing with this project and there seems to be a lot of excitement so let's continue. Now the number one request I've been getting is people want to turn this into a full-fledged hardware synthesizer that is not tied to the computer. And uh, that sounds like a really cool project. So that's what we're going to do over the next series of videos. Now the first step we're going to do is add an old school 5 pin MIDI input to our circuit so we're not tied to a computer based system. And here you can see what we've got. I've got a little sequencer sending out traditional 5 pin MIDI through this cable and arriving at this MIDI input that is then hooked to our Teensy synth. But before we get started, I got to take a minute and give a thanks to my sponsor, JLCPCB.com, for helping to make this video possible. JLCPCB has become my go to circuit board supplier, not only for their high quality boards and fast shipping times, but also their incredible 10 boards for $2 prototyping deal. You heard correctly. Simply go to jlcpcb.com and order 10 circuit boards up to 10 by 10 centimeters in size for only $2. JLCPCB can also handle large orders, lead-free boards, and custom colors. And if you're into surface mount, they can also make you a custom stencil. So for all your circuit board needs, large and small, make sure you visit jlcpcb.com. All right, so the first thing we have to do is download this program, the uh, Teensy Synth Part 9 5 pin MIDI input, and you can get the link in the video description. But before you upload the code, you're going to want to make sure you have the MIDI library installed. So if you go to the sketch menu and include library and then manage libraries. And what you want to do is just scroll down until you find this MIDI library by 47 effects. And you can see it's already installed for me, but if not, just go to more info, select the version, which is the latest version and just click install. And that will install the library. Now let's take a look at what I've added to the code to make this work. So first of all, I had to include the MIDI library. So that's MIDI.h. The next thing I have to do is add this line, MIDI create instance. And this will create an instance of the MIDI library. And I'm calling it MIDI. My serial port is serial one and it's a hardware serial port. Next, we'll go to the setup function. So if you think back, what these set handle messages do is tell the MIDI library which function I want to call when these MIDI events come in. And uh, this is the USB MIDI set we've been using this whole time. But now I've had to add a second set for my five pin MIDI commands. And luckily enough, all I have to do is send it to the exact same functions that we used before because I don't care if the MIDI comes in through USB or through 5 pin. I want it to do the same things. So we're just going to use the same functions that we did for our USB. And that's really handy because we don't have to duplicate any code. We'll use the same functions. And finally, in my main loop, I have to include a MIDI.read. And we, here's our USB MIDI dot read that we've been using, but now I'm adding the five pin MIDI dot read. And you have to add this in the main loop and keep calling it to make sure you catch any data that's coming in. All right, so that's about it. It's a pretty simple thing to do. So what we'll do is always, we'll go to tools, make sure our board type is correct, Teensy 3.2, make sure the USB type is set to MIDI, and everything else is good. And then we'll just plug in our Teensy board with the USB cable and select upload. 
And when it's done, your Teensy programmer should pop up and the chip should reboot and then you're ready to go. Now that our Teensy board is programmed, we need to build the MIDI input hardware. So this is the circuit we're going to build and this is a standard MIDI input circuit. And I actually got this from the Teensy website, so it's the official circuit that they recommend. I've actually done a in-depth video on how MIDI circuits work, but I'll give you a quick rundown just for this video. So the heart of a MIDI input circuit is this device here, which is called an optocoupler, or sometimes an opto-isolator. And just so you can get a reference, this is the actual device. So it's a little 8-pin dip chip. Now this is how the optocoupler works. On our input side, we have just a simple LED. And this is actually inside the chip, so you can't see it working, but as current passes through this circuit, it's going to turn this LED on and off. So on the other side of the circuit, we have this phototransistor. And as the light comes in from the LED, it will turn these transistors on and off, so you get the pulse from the input mirrored on the output. Now the cool thing about this is if you look, there's really no electrical connection between these two parts of the circuit. This little device actually does two things. It acts as a protector, so if something goes horribly wrong on this side, it's not going to transfer to the rest of the circuitry. And also, and more practically, it stops something called ground loops. So if you've ever had any uh, bad hums in audio gear, you know what a ground loop sounds like. And this basically isolates these two parts of the circuit so you don't get any chance of ground loops. So this is the MIDI jack. You plug the uh, MIDI in cable here. Like we said, it flashes this LED on and off. This diode is basically for protection, so if for some reason this cable is reversed, it will protect this little diode and won't let it blow up because it is kind of fragile. And on the output, we have basically a 5 volt supply running our optocoupler and a 3.3 volt pull up resistor because the Teensy we're using does operate at 3.3 volts and the output of this actually goes to the RX1 pin on your Teensy, which if you look, is actually this pin right here. All right, so now that we know how the circuit works, let's actually build it. So here's our Teensy synth that we've been working on in the previous episodes, and just so you know, this is actually underneath. So this is actually two boards sandwiched together. This is the actual Teensy board at the bottom here. So when I reference pins on this board, just realize I'm actually referencing the Teensy board underneath. So to start with, we'll place this assembly on our breadboard, and I'm going to line up the end pin here with the end of my bus strip, right, right here. So let's just put that in, and I'll center it on the board as best I can and just kind of press it in make sure it's fully seated so as you can see we need two different power sources a 5 volt and a 3.3 and we can get that on the teensy in the following places so here's the teensy's regulated 3.3 volt out output and you notice it's saying it's 250 milliamps max which we will be well under so we're fine there and this is the 5 volt supply. So this pin here is actually tied to the USB cable. And we're going to power this with USB power for now. So as the cable comes in, it's supplying 5 volts to our USB jack. And that actually can be accessed on this corner pin here. All right, to start, let's run our ground pin to the blue ground strips on our our breadboard. So the ground pin is right in the corner, top corner right here. So I'll take a little jumper wire and I'll jump it to the blue strip at the top of the board here. Now when you're dealing with breadboards, basically these strips are all connected. So right now this blue strip, the top strip, is 
all connected to ground. I also want to jump it down to this blue strip so my whole board has ground all the way around it and I can do that with a simple jumper wire. Now let's run 3.3 volts to the red line on the bottom here. And like we said on our TNC board the 3.3 volt out is this pin right here. So the third from the bottom edge. So I'll take another jumper wire and I'll run that. Alright, there it is. Now we'll place our optocoupler on the board and the important thing when you're dealing with any kind of chip like this is you need to correctly identify the pins. Now if you look closely there'll be a little mark or a notch on one end of the chip and here it is here on this chip. So when you find the notch the pins are numbered counterclockwise from that notch. So here is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what we'll do is we'll place the chip on the board with the pin 1 notch on this side. And there we go and there's the pin 1 notch. Okay, so next we'll place the diode. Now I'm using a 1N4148 small signal diode but a lot of people will use a 1N914 diode does the same thing. Now if you look on the diode there's a little mark or a band on one side and that's represented on the schematic by this line so we have to make sure that the mark on the diode is in the same orientation as this line on the schematic. So that side will go to pin 2 on our chip and the other side will go to pin 3. So if you bend the diode like this you can simply place it between those two pins. And there we go. The band is on this side which is on pin 2. So always double check your pin numbers. Next we'll install our MIDI jack. Um, I'm using one of these board mountable ones because I find these work really well on a breadboard. Now the important thing with the jack is to make sure you get the pin numbers correct. So when I'm looking on the schematic I'm looking at the jack like this and notice how the pins are numbered so this is pin 1, 2, 3, and then 4 and 5 and if you notice we're only really connecting pins 4 and 5 so these are the only two we need to worry about. Now what you have to be careful with is that you have to make sure you know what orientation this jack is in. So when I place it on the board and I flip it around notice that this is going to be pin 4 now and this is pin 5. So I'm going to place the jack right at the edge of the board here and just about one row to the left of the edge of our chip. Okay so let's connect our jack to our optocoupler. So if you notice pin 5 is connected directly to pin 3 on our jack. So I can use a little jumper wire and make that connection. And there we go, so pin 5 is connected directly to pin 3. So next we'll install this 220 ohm resistor, and here it is on the schematic. Now if you notice, one side of the resistor is connected to pin 4 on our jack, and the other side is connected to pin 2 on the optocoupler. So if I kind of bend the legs out a little bit, I can actually just bridge those two pins with the resistor. And there you go. So now let's work on the bottom side of our optocoupler. And first of all we need to take pin 5 and we have to 
connect that to ground. Now if you remember the blue strip here is ground. So we'll just take a jumper wire and connect that. Next, notice that pin 8 on the optocoupler is connected to our 5 volt supply. And as we said, that 5 volts is coming from USB and can be picked up on this corner pin right here, the VN pin. So I'm going to use a jumper wire. Connect one side to that VN pin and the other side to pin 8 on my optocoupler. Now let's look at pin 6. So pin 6 is connected to our Teensy Boards RX1 pin and also pulled up to 3.3 volts through this resistor, this 470 ohm resistor. So here's a 470 ohm resistor. And if you remember, we made this red rail 3.3 volts. And that's coming from our 3.3 volt pin on our Teensy board. So I'll just connect my 470 ohm resistor to the red rail and the other end to pin six on the optocoupler. And finally, we need to connect pin 6 on the optocoupler to the Teensy's RX1 pin. And if we look on the card here, RX1 is actually the second pin from this corner, right next to ground. And RX stands for receive, so that's the serial receive pin. So let's take a jumper wire, connect it to that pin. And then the other side will go to pin 6 on our optocoupler. And there you go. We are finished. So now that we have our circuit finished, we're ready to give it a try. So plug in your USB for power and a five pin MIDI cable to your sequencer, your MIDI controller, to anything with a five pin MIDI output. I've also hooked my audio cable into my mixer. And when I press start, I should hear the MIDI data coming through. All right, pretty cool. As we've been doing through this series, you're going to want to open up your pure data control panel. Go to media, MIDI settings, and make sure that Teensy MIDI is showing as your output device. Click apply and OK. And now when I start my sequencer, I should be able to control parameters using the USB control panel. So we're getting MIDI data from both sources, which is really cool. Now also realize that these software controls are just putting out MIDI CC data to our synth. So if my five pin MIDI can handle MIDI CC data out, then I can control these parameters from five pin MIDI as well. All right, guys, there you go. We got five pin MIDI working on the synth. The next thing we need to do is add some hardware controls to make it really standalone. Once again, I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons for helping out and making this whole thing possible. And I will see you next time.